Dear students, welcome to the class. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the topic Optical and Microwave Engineering in the Modes of Operation topic. Presented by myself, Manaka Devi, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. So, these are all the contents of today's presentation. Optical loss overview, optical modes and the configurations, mode analysis for optical propagation through fibers. First, optical loss overview. So, how the light signal actually propagate through the fiber cables? Focus on these areas is called law of optics or we can call it as a ray theory. Suppose the light travels through some materials like fiber cable, it undergo some behavior like reflection or refraction. So, these are all the examples of ray theory. So, in the first figure, equal angle of reflection. So, this one is angle of incidence and this one is angle of reflection. So, these are all the example images for Ray theory or law of optics. First one, reflection. So, what is mean by reflection? The angle of reflection equals the angle of incident. Let us take one surface and we are going to incident a light ray which makes an angle to the perpendicular axis is theta i and the refracted ray is theta r. Next, principle of operation, reflection. So, the light inside an optical fiber bunches of the cladding reflection. Let us assume inner, this one inner part is core and outer part is cladding. Here the light source, it may be a LED or laser source act as a source. When a light ray is incident on the core, it multiple times reflected and passes through the fiber optic cable. Next one is refraction. So, refraction occur when light ray passes from one medium to another medium. The refraction can also be observed at air and glass interface. When wave passes through less dense medium to more dense medium, the wave is refracted, nothing but bend towards the normal. The bending of light ray is called as refraction. Let us assume two medium, one is the air medium and the other one is the water medium. If the refractive index of the air is different from the refractive index of the water, so the light ray passes through the uh, interface between these medium it may be refracted. Next, a refractive index. The refractive index is the measure of bending of light ray when passing from one medium to the another medium. It can also be defined as the ratio of the velocity of light ray in an empty space to the velocity of light in the substance. So, in general, we can define refractive index n equal to speed of light in air to the speed of light in medium c by v for example for if in case of air medium the refractive index value is 1.003 in case of water medium the refractive index 1.333 diamond the refractive index value 2.417 in ice the refractive index value 1.31. Next one is Snell's law. Snell's law is nothing but in optics, a relationship between the path taken by the ray of light in crossing the boundary or surface of separation between two contacting substances and the refractive index of each. Let us assume two different refractive indexes N1 and N2. Here the N2 is the water medium and N1 is the air medium. This line indicates the separation or surface between the two different mediums. In Snell's law, 
theta 1 is the incident angle and theta 2 is the refracted angle. So, n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2. This is Snell's law. Next optical law is critical angle. So the critical angle is angle of incident theta 1 at the point at which the refractive angle theta 2 becomes 90 degree is called the critical angle. It is also denoted by theta c. Let us assume two different mediums I already told. N1 is the more dense medium and N2 is the less dense medium. If the ray is incident from less dense medium to pass through the more dense medium, if the angle between these two is 90 degree. So, this is the concept of critical angle. So, hence a critical angle pi 1 equal to pi c and the pi 2 equal to 90 degree. So, using Snell's law, we can define n1 sin pi 1 equal to n2 sin pi 2. So, sin pi c equal to n2 divided by n1 that is sin 90 degree. Okay, well. So, we know the value of sin 90 degree which is equal to 1. So, sin pi c equal to n2 divided by n1. So, in general, critical angle we can define pi c equal to sin inverse n2 divided by n1. So, this is the total internal reflection. So, the angle of reflection theta 2 is equal to the angle of incident. Then, this action called as total internal reflection of the beam. Okay. It's so, nothing but total internal reflection means the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection. This is called total internal reflection. Thank you students. A remaining class we will discuss in the next class.